right? <laughs> okay. Uh, if you don't mind, I will record this because then I can uh, look it repeatedly. Okay. No problem. Okay. The uh, what I call uh, now uh, classical capacitors is actually just uh, uh, nano-coated wire that comes uh, that represents the gravity, and around it you have a coil. Yeah. And the coil represents the magnetic uh, field. Yeah. And in between, we 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 have baking paper. Yeah. You you use your finger if it's brown paper. It, yeah. uh, if it's white paper, it goes straight down to the paper. But it's baking paper anyway. Yeah. And you roll it around the gravity field. Yeah. And you make it fit into the in between the ma uh, magnetic uh, field. Coil. Yeah. Coil. Yeah. That's a classical. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you prepare, of course, the output uh, from the gravity and magnetic field, so that so that it will be easy to uh, to connect. Yeah. But uh, when I was looking at nature, in uh, there was a kind of a, a discovery when I think it was. Uh, I know at least that there was someone from the Philippine team mm -hmm. that were showing um, pictures of uh, roots and plants. Yeah. And it was interesting because the sometimes in nature you see that you have curves in, in uh, small plants. Yeah. The, the curves are... Uh, let's say it starts with uh, uh, clockwise and then it goes counterclockwise. Yeah. I can remember the, the video where he showed this. Yeah. Yes. And um, uh, if you look close to the plant, much closer than just looking, uh, seeing that it's uh, clockwise and counterclockwise, yeah. you will find out very easy and it's such very, very, very logical that it's getting thinner and thinner. Mm. Uh, the, the root or the plant gets thinner and thinner as uh, on the peak. Yeah. And that has to do with gravity itself, the, the strength of the plant and direction to the plant. So what we were discussing at the time was what makes it, what makes the plant suddenly turn around. Yeah. And... You can only imagine because you need to be the plant and you, meet, you need to be the vacuum and sometimes you need to be both uh -huh. because one plant doesn't behave necessarily as another. Mm -hmm. And Da Vinci has uh, uh, at least four or five big pages of, of uh, discovery when it comes to um, one or two light sources from the plant. So that's just one reference that I, that I, at the time that I found out what his his points of view. It was uh, fascinating mm -hmm. because he actually discovered nine different, uh, um, uh, eight different light um, light slash shadow points from one from one single light source. So, of course, if that's the case, uh, then you don't have a three-dimensional understanding um, in a normal academic uh, teaching of uh, volume. Uh -huh. In the three-dimensional understanding, you actually have nine. And um, uh, the six more values that Da Vinci was pointing out uh, was absolutely clear. There was no doubt about it, but it was harder to see. Now, if you are the plant and the vacuum, then let's say that we do have um, uh, Schumann resonance. We do have um, 
observation from the gravity field, which the, where the plants come from and how it behaves towards the light. So you have light and frequency or light and sound. That's most probably why the plant goes from clockwise to, to counterclockwise. But then I, I thought of uh, the, uh, the capacitor that I just described, the classical one. Yeah. And I was making this natural calculation because you shouldn't, you shouldn't really add mathematics into the nature. It's, it's like typical nerds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was thinking that what happens with the balance in mathematics if you, if you keep two thoughts in your mind. One that has to do with the balance that is uh, on purpose uh, uh, put in the, in the uh, disequilibrium. When you, you, you make curves in the gravity field, which means that since the diameter is automatically smaller than the m magnetic field, it will appear more like a plant. It's just that you put the plant together like if it was a har harmonica, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I remember at the time I was telling the people that uh, I have a really good feeling about this. But of course, the reason why I had a good feeling about it, because I, you know, uh, enthusiastically, I wanted to see for myself what it actually re represented. Mm -hmm. So I... I took the, the gravity field and, of course, imitated the, the, the magnetic field. So I decided to take one of, one of nice numbers from the, from the Fibonacci. Mm -hmm. And so I took, uh, I choose uh, 34. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, you make a coil from the gravity field and then the magnetic field, another coil, 34, 34. Uh, both the same. And you put them, of course, inside. Yeah. So that's the only difference that you're doing with the gravity field compared to uh, to a classical uh, okay. capacitor. Uh, but what I found out was something much more uh, significant that I that I could know in advance. I immediately, you know, I'm just. Uh, filling in a little detail here is the fact that you have to increase the the diameter from a, from normal um, ways to produce your, your your capacitors if you do it because you have to make space uh, uh, between the gravity and magnetic field for the baking paper yeah and uh, so you, you have to you have to calculate all the procedure in advance. It's mm -hmm. not that easy as the, the classical, mm -hmm. uh, because of course, I, I, have to, I have to emphasize as well that, that it's really, when you think about the gravity field, just as one straight line th uh, going through the magnetic field, then of course, mathematically, you're gonna have much less uh, non-material and GANs on the gravity field Compared yeah. to the magnetic field, so that's the the mathematic uh, balance. Yeah. Well, I found out uh, that you have a totally other reaction in the magra. Mm -hmm. You first of all, you don't have any. It's it's like it's working straight ahead. Not only for uh, the kilowatt measurement to see. But you can feel it. You can feel it at once because the way it's working, it's like if, if all the magravs uh, are fragile, mm -hmm. you, you, you treat it with care, not because you, you, you're in lack of understanding, mm -hmm. but, but the device itself needs to take you know, the, this care. You have to, don't, don't put the, 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 the uh, uh, black and white, no, red and, and black to uh, the opposite side and so on. Yeah. 
But this is not the case if you make the, the capacitors the way I'm describing it. Mm-hmm. This is not the case at all. They're very strong and they work straight ahead. And then you realize that the, ch- the change is actually in the vortex. You realize that the vortex is very strong. It's working straight ahead. And uh, it's very good for the self-confidence, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you keep that as a... Uh, uh, now you, you also, so you keep this new capacitor in your mind and you put it back in the brain. Yeah. And you look at the different health pens. Yeah. Especially the health pen from the health uh, unit, the MHU. Yeah. Because it's three gravity field coming through the magnetic field in the pen yeah and nobody i you know that's the reason why i mentioned it the last time with uh, uh dr klaus because why why don't people talk about it it was never mentioned like if like if uh, all the health pens are the same it's absolutely not the case yeah okay so you now that's number two back in your brain yeah that very health pen it is it, uh, it's the per- it's the pen that is called uh, pen the pen the pain release pen. Yeah. Okay. No, so so that's number two and number three. You you look at um, what we call health um, health batteries. Mm-hmm. They have five stations. And those five uh, pieces Mm -hmm. are supposed to be, as all the other coils, super conductive. Mm -hmm. And the way you should read it, it might be something wrong there. I'm not putting all my horses into into that very blueprint. Mm -hmm. Because you need to see this for yourself, actually. You have to not only make them, but you have to have experience with them. Mm-hmm. And I got quite some experience after making 20 of them, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that was just the starter. Um, when you look at the jumps, there are actually two. We have, um, it's a five pieces uh, coils. You have two that is connected to each other. And there are three connected to each other. Mm-hmm. And it's quite particular in the way you, you use the gravity in the magnetic field. But anyway, it's much like uh, a, a capacitor. It's just that it's um, uh, hunting down from photons uh, uh, as on um, particles uh, in, a, in a more particular way, certainly more particular than and then a, a plasma battery. Although it works the same. It's, um, uh, it's the same story, once again, that you, once, once you made it, you can get up to uh, 1.2 to 1.7 volts. Mm-hmm. So it is working. It, it, is, it, is, uh, it is a response that has to do with... Uh, with um, um, with the water molecules, the GANs, and um, the gravity in the magnetic field, although that can change quite a lot. So the way you check it out is actually by by having a, a voltmeter, mm-hmm. and then you see that the gravitation field and the magnetic field are not stable; they can jump, and suddenly. Uh, but you're not after this, you see, that's the point. You're, you're after uh, what happens to the whole battery once it's dried out, once it's finished, once it's uh, ready to, uh, to be a part of the, of the health unit. And so, of course, this has to do 
with my understanding of connections, the way you connect. Um, for example, all the gravity fields and all the magnetic fields are separated. They're, uh, they end up with two, two lines in the middle in the in MHU. And so if that one battery are leading up to, it's, it's kind of stabilizing at uh, 500 millivolt, um, then that's the potential. Mm -hmm. And this is important because that's the reason why Mr. Keshe is saying that if you have a device uh, that is based on a workable or a functional um, internity loop, then you must not hesitate to put it on the gravity and the magnetic field in the health unit. That's what he said. But nobody paid attention. He said, if you connect it to the MHU, it will work straight ahead. What does that mean? Well, he, he did describe three minutes for a cancer patient. So how come that in the meantime, in Dubai, he talked about um, 12 to 16 volts putting in there. And this is serious because the, the, the guy in America, uh, he made a health unit. I, I was amazed to see that device in, in Dubai. And I was, I, you know, I couldn't understand. There was a, uh, he could switch the connections from um, the plasmatic field using the battery to electrical. Uh, and, and, and I'm talking really electrical. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, this is madness. This doesn't make any sense. Because you see, if it did make sense, uh, should you should you just uh, disconnect the salt water that is supposed to be the um, the load? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's it's connected automatically in um, in all blue, blue, blueprints. So if you put electrical voltage, it doesn't really matter if it's one volt or twelve or sixteen. And and at the time, I spoke to Mr. Kesh. I said, "This is this is it doesn't make any sense. You don't have to. You don't have to do this." And he said, instead of saying yes or no, he just said that it's two different concepts. And I actually used one month thinking about it. You know, I couldn't get it out of my brain. And I found out that he wants something to work in the meantime knowing that there is something missing. So that's the reason also that he said spontaneously that in the, in the inner outer core plus magrav, I was one of the only one in the world to actually build one. And I only used four days to, to build it and it worked. But you see, once again, he said, because he didn't, he couldn't see the details because of my camera. So he said, now, uh, of course, you would be amazed if you had a, a contact with a nano-coated contact to the inner core and outer core. And then I think it was Rick who said, uh, but that's what he has. <laughs> he, he, it's actually connected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he changed his mind. He said, uh, what do you have? Because he's got, he forgot his own blueprint, right? Yeah. So he said, what do you have in the bottle on the right side? And I, you know, it was no, I, since I built it, I know it by heart, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, uh, it's lead. It's, it's liquid plasma lead based, right? Yeah. And he said, change it. Change it to uh, 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 C CH2. And I was thinking, of, uh, that's no problem. But why did you put uh, um, the, the lead uh, as the repre uh, to, to represent the gravity field? 
uh, it was that out of the blue uh, and now suddenly it's it's uh, copper oxide that is um, in liquid plasma state supposed to be the gravity field instead of the lead and then he said uh, he, he, he didn't only say it changed the bottle he said then you will see it wor it's working you know now what didn't work is actually the the magrav as we used to know it it's it's actually an early hybrid principle but one would think the, the, uh, theoretically that if you add if you have an inner outer core principle with the a tree stacker around it you can't go wrong uh -huh. but it's it's not like the more uh, devices you put together the better it works that's not the way it works at all yeah uh -huh. you know you have to be a child and and simplify or everything that you do uh -huh. but first you have to understand the most complicated things right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but anyway um, the 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 explanation that I, I wanted you to take into account is actually a principle that we, we did talk about and hardly anybody were um, testing it out, you know. But I, I never tested it out, but I, I remember it. It's when you have a coil, um, you have a non-coated copper wire and you, you, you have two curves, you know, to, to end the loop. Yeah. And you put a, and you use a very uh, sharp uh, knife, and you make a s stripe all over, very very thin stripe. The, the eye can't hardly see it afterwards. Yeah. That has to do. This is important stuff because it has to do with the difference between the atomic mass, and the reason why the atomic bus, uh, ma mass are are not creating atoms anymore rather isotopes so this has to do uh, with how how the the, the copper in the, uh, the the copper plate inside the nanomaterial why in certain cases there are uh, surprising isotopes in your gans in the in the gans water mm -hmm. well there is a, there is a, a link between that understanding the the nano coated wire with the stri stripe mm -hmm. you take off the nano layer of course that's the whole purpose you, yeah. scra you scrape off the layer making a line yeah when you have 110 volt or 220 volt it's going to heat up it's going to be a very resistant feel and this is simple. The reason is because if you uh, understand the copper like if it was yin and yang, yeah. but you you make on purpose that yin are stronger than yang or the opposite, then that's the understanding of the copper itself. It's the same property as silver uh, and gold. But yeah. more, more silver than gold. Mm -hmm. That's why CERN are using superconductor, uh, creating superconductor with silver. They don't need the nanomaterial if you have the whole device in silver. All you have to make sure of is that the gravity field doesn't touch the magnetic field. Otherwise, it will burn up you know, or explode. That's the only difference. So I, I, I've tried to tell people about this nobody listens you have to understand the difference between um, a superconductor and superconductivity and people don't make the difference the reason is simple because they don't study CERN they don't remember pictures from CERN you see many years ago they they made a, a cannon in silver yeah and and that cannon is the gravity field with the magnetic field inside. It is so strong because they connected one million volt to the unit. And that's 
when you know this, then you can actually trust for once in your life, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> because everything else is written down there. It's actually, they're only showing one direction uh, so they can hide the seriousness behind this weapon. They're only showing the direction up and that because it's creating more it's like a laser a new understanding of laser the fact is that one of the two lengths are going up to the ionosphere one of two mm -hmm. so the way they break it the way they break the angle of that particular energy that is very much like a laser is using uh, a kind of a satellite that's all they need and they use that satellite for many purposes not only for the laser beam but to aim the target and i i think it's it's eight eight centimeters uh closer yeah also the, the 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 tolerance the, the tolerance of the distance yeah yeah and um um uh, so uh but that was a that was a part it's it's just it's just that superconductivity is not the same thing as a superconductor because at CERN they on, only use straight superconductors that's the reason why mr Kesh are promising with, without telling i don't know if if he knows <laughs> but he's telling people that he with everything that he represents uh, gives out a promise that plasma technology cannot hurt people where does he take that guarantee from it's actually making a, a, a circular superconductor when you make a circular superconductor you cannot use it as a weapon it's not going to happen that's why he puts his guarantee into it. And there is no way that a super, um, uh, a superconductor can be used for bad things because once you bend it and you have an inner core, outer core, it's only up to your consciousness, the way you want to use it. It's not possible to create something destructive with it because the energy is already there so that's the guarantee uh, and when it comes to the ganses of course one just have to remember that there were these mad people in the united states starting drinking gans you know <laughs> and uh, uh i i remember that uh, mr kish had a cool reaction on it he with a very calm voice he just said uh I didn't, I didn't tell anyone to drink it. Mm -hmm. And this were four months before he ever thought about liquid plasma. It didn't yeah. exist. Yeah. Well, anyway, the, the resistance, this all, you have to put all this puzzle as a big picture. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, to see the differences between the health pens, uh, the, the bat caps, and the capacitors, and all kinds of devices actually, because uh, you remember that Nina's, Nina's uh, coil was rather a joke. It looked like a joke because she had, she had, a, she had made the coil that, that was going in all directions and she used her uh, i don't remember if it was the left hand or the right hand as the opposite uh direction of the head of a person and she mm -hmm. actually took away uh, a tumor mm -hmm. and uh so that's her way to to use the coil but when you are into superconductivity then you have, of course you have to have a frame for it the frame in this case is not in a, a straight silver 
superconductor. It's a nano-coated copper wire with a certain amount of spin. And when, uh, if you add the two uh, materials together, the the the, no, the uh, nano nano material and the ganses, then you do, then you, um, then you don't necessarily have a match. You have a mix. You you, and and of course this is important because the match would 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 mean that you know exactly the amount of GANS that is going to dry on the surface of the GANS, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the nano. Of the nano material, yeah. yeah. If you don't know exactly the amount, then uh, uh, you're in the guessing area because mm -hmm. there was uh, another puzzle um, one year ago uh, Renan and his team they had uh, put their coils several times into the GANS so mm -hmm. the GANS ended up like light green and they actually had paper around it and when Mr. Kesh saw this he said uh, did you mummify your, your, your coils? Mm. And, uh, I remember Renan said, no, uh, no, Mr. Kesh, the, you see, the problem is that the, the, the GANS has a tendency to fall off. Mm. And then suddenly we went completely in the other direction. That, no, no, you should have a very, very thin layer of GANS on the non-material. Mm. So we went from very thick and I remember because I, at the time where this was happening, there was a Danish um, electrician who were about to turn completely mad in his head. He said, why didn't Mr. Kesh talk about this in advance? Now I have to wash off all the gases with a toothbrush, mm. you know? And I, I, I thought really poor of him, you know, because, uh, yes, why didn't he tell? Well, we were all about to to help to the research. But if you, if you understand the difference between a thick layer of GANS on the nanomaterial and a very thin layer, then let's say that your first reaction, once you have a very thin layer of GANS, you would think of it as um, something extremely solid compared to a thick layer of GANS on the nanomaterial. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, in between there, it's uh, approximate science is going to be approximate. It's not accurate. You need to know exactly what you're doing. All, all the procedures has to be repeated. So, of course, I, I wasn't happy about the fact that uh, you, when you make one magrav or you make one pen, uh, it doesn't really matter because they're never going to repeat. It's never going to be the same thing. Well, that's very idealistic. But it, is it scientific, you know? Mm. Uh, what, exa <laughs> what exactly? What is the amount? What is it supposed to look like? Well, then you have to understand the nanomaterial and you have to understand the ganses. Why you're mixing your ganses? Why, if you, if you want to only use one uh, one gans why would you make one gans and if you want if you are to 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 use two then where you would you put them right mm -hmm. so that uh, it, it's quite amazing because in in the presentation that i made with a with a friend of mine and was renting in the house to, uh, andreas i'm talking about the dosages and this has to do as much for the nano coating with you know uh, with the GANS on as much as the understanding itself. But I remember at the time, the only thing that I had to work with, this was before, I haven't seen pictures, but, but when the Chinese, I, I checked out the Chinese um, laboratorium, how come 
that suddenly we have uh, pictures of uh, uh, copper gas, co uh, copper oxide from China. And I was checking out the firm if, they, if, if it was in any shape or form connected to, to Cash Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I found out that, that it didn't. It didn't have any connection. So then I had to read. Uh, I, I, just, I, I had to guess what happened. And <laughs> I still, I'm still guessing. So my guess is that there was one person uh, in China who took the, uh, the copper oxide to the laboratorium. And I guess that after 14, three weeks, uh, he had a result. And he put it out on, on, on Facebook. And that result means the whole world. Because in that result, even if you only have copper oxide, you can see for yourself that if you put, if you look at all the pictures, I've, I remember it was uh, four or five pictures of copper oxide. Well, they were all pentagons. But you, have, you need to know what you're looking for. Otherwise, it's going to just be a, a, a bunch of circles. So you have to look really careful. You have to understand, for example, that even if it's written in small Chinese letters, that it was 2,000, uh, 2,700, I think it was 2,100 or 700 times um, big, bigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you get to see what, what kind of soup do you make, you know? And um, at the time, I was lucky because I had a scientist from London coming by. Um, Salt. Uh, yeah. Salt. Mr. Salt. <laughs> As, you know, pepper. And uh, uh, he, he told me, uh, actually, I, told, I asked him uh, what the reason why he was here was to check for himself if it was nanomaterial mm -hmm. as a result of the copper. That's the only reason why he came. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when he was in London, I, I asked him, what is the likelihood, now that we know, uh, this, this Mr. Salt and me, that uh, copper oxide was based on uh, pentagons? So I asked him, what is the likelihood that... Uh, zinc oxide is going to end up as uh, pentagons as well. And he laughed and he said, that's no chance. It's going to be heptagons, octagons. It's going to be something else than pentagons, right? Listen to this, Ingrid. Yeah. If you, if you can say that there is no copper in the copper oxide and there is no zinc in the zinc oxide, as much as there is no iron, in the iron gans, right? Yeah. Then what is, what's in there? Now, you need to look at those pictures and know what you're looking for. For example, in the center of all the pentagons, they, they have a slight variation in sizes in the center, like if it was a cell. Yeah. Then, uh, what's around them? Is it, is it um, a mixture of um, silicon and distillated water and maybe some salt? Or is it, it, is, is it a product that are also based on copper oxide? What makes them... What, because they... It's getting very chaotic, you know, in an electromagnetoscope or a microscope when you look at it because of the surface. So mm -hmm. you, need to, you, you need to look at for patterns. Mm -hmm. And what I found out that made me very happy, but of only me in this world, <laughs> <laughs> that no, none of them were the same. Yeah. Uh -huh. The only thing that the, all the circles had in common was the pentagons. Mm -hmm. They were not the same either. So I figured out how they change. 
this is of course extremely important because you just keep in mind that there is no snowflake that are the same falling down from the skies mm -hmm. so you want to look for uh, as many natural patterns as possible mm -hmm. and this of course was one of them because even though even though the pentagons doesn't change much um, in size mm -hmm. you can see that they're a bit smaller and big a bit bigger they do change in colors mm -hmm. from a uh, uh, dark brown to to all the way up on the color scale to to light pink mm -hmm. they actually have uh, circles around them that's where you can see that they're all different that's more easier for the eye to see mm -hmm. so okay we have pentagons which means that we are into uh, uh, geometry. Now, the only thing you have to understand is the difference in shape and form between the cell and the molecule, because that's going to help you to understand uh, the, uh, what does uh, oxygen look like. You know, how what does uh, uh, an atom look like, or um, uh, oxygen or nitrogen you know what does it really look like and the, when you look at if you're going all the way from from um, uh, pho the photons photon if you can call it particles you know pure, mm -hmm. pure energy and you see you go all the way to see how many uh, uh, how many photons you need to make an electron Mm -hmm. and then you go from an electron and you look at the whole atom to, see, to try to see if they, if they do have something in common. They all seem to be built on photons. And the glue is extremely important in the oxides because if you understand, if, if you're really curious and you want to know that um, the 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 strangeness of the the nanomaterial itself uh, why wouldn't you think that uh, silicon is as strange as or, or alien as as uh, nanomaterial because when the um, when the silicon are um, is part of the mixture in the salt water, then you can take it for granted that um, when the moon is taking the the the, um, the waters up and down uh, yeah. a couple of times during the day, then you do have a circulation of this of these um, particles, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the match with the plastic container. And you have to keep it in mind all the time, because if you don't, then you're gonna have you're gonna end up with a, 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 an oxide uh, that that are where where you take the silicon out and exchange it with um, distillated water, and that's not what you want to do. You want to take the salt particles as much as possible from the ganses mm -hmm. but not the silicon because that that must be that's a part of um, of the whole atmosphere but it is as strange as nanomaterial because one researcher are saying that uh, the only reason why we have nanomaterial in this world is because of ancient uh, meteors if they didn't come here we wouldn't have any nanomaterial at all on this planet. And so you have to see the difference between uh, uh, old meteor that is kilometer down in Earth and the difference between the sun. And so you have to go through the, the atmospheric conditions as much as the Earth conditions in order to, to have a, a feeling of a match between the nanomaterial and the gas material. Because it's all, uh, for example, when you stare, nobody talks about this either. 
that when you stir uh, uh, your oxides in order to make a GANS, then what you're actually doing is to replace the, the water molecules with the air molecules. And in the air molecules, we have salt. And so you're never going to, to get really rid of the salt in your GANS. But there is a difference between salt and silicon. And this is extremely important for the whole procedure in order to at least to try to understand the difference between uh, a pen that might not work, uh, vice versa, a pen that really works. Because if that's just spooky uh, phenomenon, where you always uh, think in circles, it's certainly not science. You know? So, uh, that's, that's the pictures that I can think of, uh, Ingrid, that has to do with, with you, know, you know, picking up pieces, putting them uh, in place, and try to, to, to make, of course, the picture as big as possible. Yeah. So, um, when you compare, let's say that you, uh, let's say that you, you have a magnetic coil uh, that you cut in two. Mm -hmm. and you don't you don't do anything more. You just cut the the, the gravity um, the magnetic field in two pieces. Uh, you aim for the center. It doesn't really matter if it's uh, uh, sixteen here, vice versa twenty four, for example. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. You're just aiming for the center. So what are you actually doing while you're making a bad cap? Well you are going to uh, air coat it, air nano coat it. The reason why you have to air coat it is because if you're going to coat it like the rest of the coils, then the folio, the silver folio, the, uh, what, is it silver folio? Yeah, the, the aluminium foil. Aluminium, aluminium foil, yeah. yeah. That's going to take, that's going to burn up. You have to be very careful when you do it. You have to have it on the top of the tank in order to uh, protect the, the, the foil. And um, what's next? If, you, if your intention is to, to introduce those bat caps into 220 volt, then you have to understand what you're doing because you, you, may, you have to make a choice. <clears throat> if, you, if you don't, if you just cut it, the the, uh, the bat cap with thirty four spin in two, then you have gone. You're going to have a same reaction as the scrape uh, on on a straight uh, yeah. non coated wire. You're going to have heat coming, and that's no surprise. And uh, so you have to think all the way through the the solid plasma direction that has to do with uh, the particles in the air and the free plasma that's going straight through uh, the gravity field up to gas and from gas to photons, you know, free. And, um, uh, but of course, through all the solid starts with heavy um, particles, um, uh, carbon based you know and um, uh, the result from that kind of bad cap um, um, the reason why this has been shown but not talked about is because the people don't understand that what about next year are you, go are you going to have uh, constantly 220 volt on it and have you tested it in one year? Not one year is not a long time. Mm. So if you're constantly going to push heat, then mm. it's going, something is going to happen to the nanomaterial and the GANS. Mm. That's not good. It's only good for batteries. So when you make a curve, once you cut it in two, and you have, a, of course, the same direction in the, on the magnetic uh, coil, always the same direction, otherwise you're going to end up with a, you know, 
negative positive and 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 the coil itself is not going to be uh, possible to connect correctly so you you aim in one direction and you cut it in two and then you nano coat it when it's finished but of course it's um, when you make a curve you end the energy so you can make so the non um, the, the plasma can make a jump and that's what it has in common with the health patterns you see and and so you don't need the you will not have a problem of heat anymore but you you need to keep the heat in the mind anyway because 220 volt are not natural it's never going to be natural we know this because if you compare the reaction either from capacitors bat caps or or capacitor and bat caps um, we know now from 100, 200, um, 120 volt on 110, 220, and 2000, and we know that you always you can always expect heat, and this is not natural, and and it's not due to uh, hybrid or, or or magra, it's due to a lack of understanding. So one of the clues uh, because the less heat you have the more it's natural the more it's plasma and it's not plasma and 220 volts so it's never really going to work with with 220 volt never not 2000 either because the reaction is not natural the the result from that kind of energy mm -hmm. can only uh, do what it does best is actually to nanocoat in the opposite direction. <laughs> That's the only thing that it can do. But uh, uh, I guess the best part is the vortex itself. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to give you an information that is absolutely wonderful to know. Um, Imagine that you have iron, zinc, and copper oxide. And you know, you look in your GANS, <coughs> <coughs> um, it takes some experience to see the thickness on the, once you dipped it, uh, the coil, and you take it up to, to dry, on the, another material, it takes quite some experience to see what kind of layer, la uh, layer uh, of GANs you want. Because you don't, it's not, it's not enough just to say that, yeah, well, you have a very firm pattern here uh, because you can touch it and you can hardly see the GANs. And so it gets strong on the opposite of if, if the GANs is, have a tendency to just fall off, like if it was uh, uh, too much sun on the skin, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, once you have this, this, at least these three uh, ganses on the nano layer, then I know that if you have food ganses and you collect your food ganses and you pour it into the ganses, the metal ganses, the ganses from the metals. and um, All of them in, in the same container? Yeah, in, yeah. Liquid, in liquid plasma state. Mm -hmm. Then something happens, and I know it from experience because I've seen it. The, uh, the less... Um, let's... Let's try to, to see what photons are. <coughs> Don't think of photons the same way as, as the amount of different cells in the body so that you give up. You will never find out how many different cells you have in your body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but why shouldn't that be the same thing with photons? Photons are extremely intelligent, all of them. 
So in the microscopic science, you do have scientists talking about photons like if it was another particle, knowing, of course, that they're so small that, and they, were, and they travel very fast. <laughs> so it's easier to, to, to fetch uh, uh, any kind of particle compared to a photon. And um, let's say it, that they do have consciousness. And when you go all the way by starting with an electron and you end up with, with, a, with a carbon um, and the, the more heavy the, the, the particles become, then that's very much what we're dealing with for the eye to see. But uh, most of them, of course, you can't see. It's already, it's, all, it's always going to be in the, on the micro level. But at least we call them particles because we approximately know about them. So if they're all, uh, because we've been talking for at least 100 years on uh, atomic level or uh, um, molecular level, but if we talk about on a photon level, and you, you say that plasma and photons are the same thing if you're talking about free, free plasma or free energy at all, because this, of course it's going to be a, a cocktail of the two particles and, and, and energy. And so from that point, that, from that very point of view, now, you realize that if you're after the essence of a fruit and you call it loosely food gas, then the essence of the fruit are based on the same principle as the ganses itself from coming from the metals. Mm -hmm. So when you compare them, it's only going to be comparable uh, all the way back to photons. Because if all the particles are based on photons, then why shouldn't fruit be so as well? And so now imagine the mosaic that it represents on your nanomaterial. Once you put 220 volt and you pay as much attention, attention to the vortex as much as the output from the gravity and magnetic field, then that's where the surprise is. Because let's say that uh, you're using the most heaviest metals for the electric purpose. And that's going two ways. It's going to be a once on the, one for the load side and one for the grid. But in the meantime, you're creating this vortex that are based on that principle as much as the food ganses. And you, you only have to understand the difference between the mix and the match because the mix is like insisting, putting, uh, putting stuff into the, into the soup in order from, uh, like, like you insisted. That's going to be the mix. You're mixing particles. But the match is most likely richer in looking from the vortex point of view. The much, much richer because keep the principles of two uh, uh, flashes going, going into the, to the uh, zero point and out again. Uh, and we loosely call that as well, gravity and magnetic. But um, if, the, if, if the vortex from the, <coughs> <coughs> from, sorry, if the vortex from the magra is uh, monatomic, then why would you put would you keep, keep keep on calling it gravity and magnetic field together? It's useless. It's uh, and you know uh, we have we have said over and over again, not knowing what we're saying, right? About the fact that all whatever kind of gans you make, they're all they all have the property of monatomic. Um, uh, 
skill, uh, you know, the uh, property, the, the, the monatomic property. And, and, the other, and the other part, you can say <clears throat> that on the surface, th there is a great tendency to collect uh, amino acids, you know. That's another property that has nothing to do with monatomic particles. And then you have the, the new research that is extremely important that uh, Nassim is uh, uh, about to, to dive into. The secret about protons. And uh, uh, I was amazed to hear that Mr. Kesh talked about this today. Mm -hmm. and, and it's clear that, that he doesn't understand. But the, he's charming because the way he doesn't understand makes you curious. <laughs> so, so he's really a messenger. Because you see, if you can, let's say that you put electrons uh, on a wire and you start to push the electrons only after the protons and you realize that if you do that, it's going to give you a, a, the property of bending time and space. That's what it does. That's why uh, um, Nassim is, a, is fascinated by this. And you, it's so important because in the proton, no, no neutrons or no electrons around it. You only keep, eye, keep the eye on the uh, protons. And you realize it's got the same principle, exactly the same principle uh, uh, as the bumblebee or the scarabee. Same principle. You just have to look, look at this. It's like a... It's like a secret in a secret, in a secret, like a rabbit hole, you know? Uh, if, you, if you take the principle of the uh, scarabee, and you look, if you push your finger on the inside of the wing, it's going to repulse. And if you put your finger on the outskirt of the wing, it's going to attract. Which means that <laughs> the scarabee when it opens its wings, it creates an own vortex. That's how he can fly, but, mm. but, but bad, because it doesn't fly much, you know, it's out of training. <laughs> and uh, so you can say, uh, if you use the principle of a bumblebee, that's easier to understand, because the bumblebee has this, this thread, this... Uh, uh, tunnel in the, in the mouth going straight into the stomach and it's creating the same field, which means that the only th principle of uh, levitation that the bumblebee and the scarabee has in common is the fact that they uh, only use the wings to stare with right, left and straight ahead. And that's that explains why their landing is so bad, because you need to you need to close the vortex if you want to land. Because you cannot fly and stand on the ground at the same time, so it, the bumblebee has to decide. Oh, now I'm very close, <laughs> and look at them; they're so clumsy. But we we didn't know why, you know, because this is inside the uh, the vortex. So they're flying with the vortex using the wings just to steer with. Mm. And they're both very bad at it, you know. <laughs> it's not yeah. amazing. And this is important because um, let's say that the bumblebee, one, when it, it's breathing in and out, and that's the very creation of the, of the vortex, in the bumblebee to create the vortex around it so it can levitate. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say, I wouldn't be surprised if the oxygen are transforming, pulling the, 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 the protons, that, that's, it, that's the very skill of the, the, the breathing mechanism, the, the once it's, it's breathing in, using uh, 
taking protons from the uh, from the um, oxygen particles and transform it to protons and now you have a vortex can you imagine if that's the way they do it because in the proton you have one out and one in in both directions which means that they're not monatomic they don't need monatomic structure or condition what they do is what comes in gets out the other side in both directions which means that the capacity from the protons are enormous it means for example that you don't need a black hole because it is a black hole a, a monatomic particle needs a black hole it uh, uh, the particle going in and out of different dimensions without space time but the proton is even much better it's even better to use if you know how to uh suck them down or speed up or um, uh, it will be practical to get the electron away you know <laughs> <laughs> and and I know I know for sure that even if you if if you, even if you don't manage to separate what comes with, separate if you if you manage you don't have to to separate uh, what comes with the proton because you, you only need to crush it and when it lines up. Uh, and you push them it's spending time and space and that's we know for sure I, but it doesn't only bend time and space you find out very quickly that there is a, a before time and space and after you know we call it future and past <laughs> Ingrid, are you there? I, I, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm, I, I'm listening carefully. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I, I have to switch in my mind uh, uh, my concepts and uh, uh, let in your concepts because they are completely different. <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but this is uh, um, you know I, I seriously think that there <coughs> there is nothing good that could come from this world it's just that I just discovered it so it's not a depressive news on my behalf but uh, I'm convinced of it there is nothing that I it's nothing that I remember from Um, there is nothing in this world that can compare to my dreams, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But these are uh, this this conversation is the only thing that I think of as slightly interesting. Mm. <laughs> you know, my mm -hmm. favorite waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, I, I know um, uh, from myself, uh, when I try to explain my own thoughts to somebody else, my own inner picture becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And therefore, it's so essential to have yes. somebody uh, to, to whom we are able to... Uh, to explain our own thoughts and I think you are lucky uh, to have uh, Monique with you uh, because um, you can speak with one another and yeah. and I too because I have my husband and we can speak uh, uh, the whole day if we want to do uh, and uh, this is a uh, enormous <laughs> gift <laughs> and and I'm very happy. Yeah, Monique say it's a it's a privilege that we yeah. have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate it very much. And Monique is saying 
to be on you're not going anywhere said, but I'm here <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much of me here but I'm here <laughs> but you yeah. know uh, uh, it's so strange that uh, I think from time to time depending on the mood and the day that Mr. Keshe's are, are, are on um, the the inspired Mr. Kesh, that seems to be, he's not very inspired when it comes to uh, uh, pedophily, uh, pedophilia and that kind of, or, 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 or earthquakes, you know. Yeah. But um, it, I think it's very important to, to differ, to make, to, to realize that uh, he's a human too. And, and, uh, I think it's very true what the other scientists are when they we know when they're talking about Mr. Kesh, they the ones who the few who tolerates him. Mm. They're saying about Mr. Kesh that uh, it is a very interesting guy and uh, and uh, he's very intu intuitive. And you shouldn't, you know spend 50 years of your time to find out that um, if you're intuitive then you depend on inspiration you, you depend on passion and uh, I think he has a, a crowd around him that are not necessarily inspiring I think uh, Mr. Dr. Klaus is very inspiring um, uh, but this bigotry uh, this this uh, lack of understanding uh, can be very uh, confusing, very irritating. Uh, I heard today, for example, that Mr. Keshe is not only uh, teaching the human race; he's teaching the whole universe. And and to me, uh, that's a lack of a lot of things. That that's. A, a, I hope people didn't hear it, you know, because that's not what you say. You don't talk like this. You know, you have to differ between intelligence and wisdom. And in that sentence, there might be some intelligence, but there's surely never, a, 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 not even a slight of wisdom in it. Because if it's teaching the whole universe, then who else are listening? And, and, uh, uh, He's made out of particles, like all of us. You know, wh wh shouldn't we look more into what we have in common than, than see the difference between an emperor and a king, you know? How far can you go? Are you God, you know? And if, if that's the case, give me a new car. <laughs> and this is serious because... Um, uh, I've seen that the people who are work is, uh, working as much as they are thinking, you know, doing as much as they're thinking, uh, that makes that makes different people in the Keshe Foundation. Mm. And it's like uh, a bit strange that suddenly you have 230 people on the chat, chat room uh, at nine o'clock in the night. What, you know, uh, we have a lot of work. And, you know, uh, to my surprise, the three, four last weeks, you know, once now, I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything because I can't continue wi without uh, scientific clues that is actually working. I can't have something in between from a mediocre result, you know? And I must tell you this, Ingrid, this is important. Mm -hmm. Since I started the first Magra based on the new capacitors, we finally have a visual difference that is no discussion. It is absolutely coming from the Magras. That's for sure. What but do we mean? haven't been sure of now. 
What do you mean by visual difference? Oh, uh, it's the statistics, statistics from the... <coughs> you have graphics uh, on your um, bills, uh, electric bills. Yeah. And the graphic are radical, like poof, falling like... Uh, like the difference in the span, uh, like energy, lead. electricity uh, bill from last year. Ah, uh, okay. Um, not only by the numbers you can uh, distinguish, uh, but you can uh, see the difference by, by one glance, you mean. Graphs, okay. graphs. They give yeah. us a graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And the graph is like, 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 a, like a jump, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, the second, this, the, the last important thing, except for this, is that... Ingrid, are you there? Uh, I, I'm here. I, I, I switched on my camera uh, <laughs> to, see, to see me in, in, in person. <laughs> the last important... Yeah. Uh, 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 because that's, that, that's where we are now. We should, at least should be. When you... Well, let's say that you have a Magra uh, three-stacker with... Uh, a deeper and clearer understanding of uh, um, the capacitors and the bath caps. And you don't interfere with 220 volts. And the reason is this. When you look, up, look at, uh, let's say that you have one weak part and one strong part. And those two uh, mathematic conclusions is the... <clears throat> <clears throat> is the your conscious choice of using the spin from the inner outer core times three, right? So you have three sets of coils, uh, superconductors, mm -hmm. and on the other side, you have uh, capacitors. Mm -hmm. And if you stop thinking of the capacitors as as if they were um, only there to introduce before you send uh, 220 volt up to the to the coils. Now skip the understanding, or rather skip the jump over the electricity at all, and you look at what you have, and then you will see that the beginning of understanding between how you make your new <clears throat> how and why you make your new capacitors. That's step one. Now step two in the mathematic conclusion is the fact that if you look for the end principle of a typical infinity loop, then of course it's going to be once again mathematic that the, the amount of spin that you have in the gravity and magnetic field coming from the capacitors should equal somehow to make a perfect dif difference. If you're aiming, for example, for 4951, shouldn't be far from the truth in, in, the, in, the, in our solar system, because there is an imbalance, a taker and a giver, or a weaker and a strong. And so, <clears throat> if you look at the, uh, why the vortex are coming from the center of the three coils, then shouldn't you shouldn't you think of the capacitors as the opposite side of the coil since the, the vortex are, are aimed in the three coils, in the center of, of the middle coil? Why wouldn't you think of it as a mathematic balance so that you make sure that you, you, you take the, the two minutes that it takes to calculate the inner outer core um, uh, the gravity spins uh, uh, with the magnetic field <clears throat> uh, times three. So you look at it as a unity. And then you make your capacitors to somehow make a balance between them. The reason for this, you see, is because if the magical device appears, that has to do with pure plasma, no electric uh, currency, then you realize that your magrav is ready. 
it's surely not ready now because what you just did was to introduce uh, two entrances to to make the the connection between plasma and electricity and that's surely for no good because if it was for any good then how do you explain the infinity loop that Douglas had it was the usage of the the currents that has nothing to do with electricity not nothing at all it's the infinity loop itself that are providing with its intelligent energy the amount that your your fridge or lamp needs it doesn't it doesn't tell at all that that you have a uh, 220 volt times god knows how much in a in a in the infinity loop so if you're aiming for the infinity loop thinking that i rather be like the plant then mm. what happened to the electricity mm. it's not there so if there is no electricity then you have to think about uh victor schabager for example and that's just an example you can you can add to the to it that if you if you beam um um cold light to a crystal you'll have the same effect it's just that you're taking the vote photons from another uh from a, from another source and that's where uh william reich is coming in as well it's exactly the same principle it's just that he's he's not using the nanomaterial he's use, he's not using the gas he knows that the current in the water uh, is going are going to represent the movement underneath no above uh, uh, your 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 stone the the argonite that's the only difference because um i i'm i'm so sure of this that the argonite has a property to figure out for itself the the difference of certain uh photons i know this because if you look at the statistics of what he had then there must be a reason uh, why on the one side you you it it healed cancer and on the other side you got horny as a rabbit that's the two statistics that he ended up with and he didn't understand why he just he just you know the patients that were coming back he, he was here in oslo and uh william rice put the statistics up saying well you, you got rid of your cancer uh congratulations my box is working but i can't explain why you are horny as a rabbit <laughs> it doesn't make any sense and that's what argonite energy or organ energy does to you you know and so you have to you have to kind of be the patient and then you have to be uh as close as you get to the personality of of this uh, fabulous uh, man that that uh, william reich was but and so um uh, my strong guess is that you 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 need even if you have uh, organite uh, and let's say that the organites are very good to pick up uh, specific uh, photons and uh, uh, the color of that energy is going to be one and the same over and over again because the source is the organite but then how do you catch it how do you get the same energy over and over again even if you use uh argonite you have to catch it somewhere in order you know, like our magrams and and so i know that because i've seen certain pictures uh, one picture that was very badly done from uh, uh william reich's uh, son mm -hmm. uh, that in the wooden box that he had there was a there was a iron 
he was uh, using pure iron plate with holes. And in modern quantum physics, there is a principle shooting uh, uh, photons through the holes. So now you only have to add uh, uh, what's coming from above, not what's coming from the underneath, because that's what, that's what you have. You have water, the stone, and the iron. And, and the surprise, uh, like Monique was writing for you, is the fact that you're using iron for the magnetic uh, currency. That's a strange, because, the, you know, why would you put holes in the, in, the, in, the, in the iron plate? And so many, you know, they're very, uh, very, uh, it's almost like a steel. It's like equal space in the, in the iron plate. That must as far as I know, uh, he did his uh, devices uh, uh, with with um, with full plates too, without any holes. Uh, the principle of the holes uh, uh, cannot be uh, the primary uh, uh, cause of the effects. It's an alternative, yeah, because the. I, something tells me that this is a mixture between the protons and the uh, photons in order to make it work. So for the, for the magnetic part is actually literary, literary magnetic. It's not uh, uh, an, a mag magnetic field. What, what iron can do is the same property as uh, aluminum, that it's calling down the um, uh, photons and then the iron transform, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, the iron, um, the photons transform the protons and makes a, a mixture from the water and the stone. This has to be because the photon themselves are only transformative like a subatomic particle. That's what they have in common. That's the only thing they have in common. So you have to look at the protons instead. That if you can, if you can somehow, and that's what Mr. Kesh mentioned today, but I, I guess we, we, we don't know yet that we disagree because he's talking about uh, to get rid of the electrons around the, the proton. And I don't think that's going to happen. So if, if you can understand uh, why aluminium and, and iron are, are such a good material to use for the magnetic part, that's a surprise in itself because you would think of them as rather heavy. But not when it comes to protons because you don't need, even need to go into the material itself. The material itself have, have that particular skill, but it, de it depends on how you, how you use it. So let's say that for the eye to see, you would think nothing can come through the plate. But if you have the um, uh, uh, organite straight underneath, and look at what they have in common. They're both, they're both on a molecular level coming from photons anyway. So it shouldn't really matter except for the usage of protons. And, so the, the, and, and the reason why I add water to it is one, I, uh, number one, I've heard about it and I read about it. But then I, I was thinking, why? Why does he use the water? And then, uh, you know, I was thinking, <clears throat> there is a simple reason. If you compare iron or aluminium on the top, and then you have argonite, and then you have water, then it's the same principle as a pyramid. Yeah. As when, when you have a, a board, uh, horizontal line with water, then the water doesn't need to move because it's going to be uh, 
enough currency uh, on both sides. So that's that's when I took the guess that there must be a usage or understanding principle of water as if it was negative energy. That's the connection <clears throat> between the box, the device, Earth, and the connection on the magnetic part. So Earth is uh, having communication with the water, the water having communication with the iron plate, and the argonite in the middle. Now you have a, a, a particular, because it seems to me that uh, uh, William Reich does tell that the energy is blue. Yeah, yeah. He wrote, it is, it is a, a kind of bluish shimmer, yeah. Yeah. And so that has to do, of course, it must have to do uh, with photons, particularly photons, because there is no... Um, Hydrogen might be blue, but only in the soup. <laughs> yeah. um, in my inner picture, what we call photons, electrons, protons, neutrons, whatever you might uh, think of, mm -hmm. particles, each of these particles is a spherical vortex and uh, the only difference uh, between one or the other kind of particle is the volume of the vortex or and the way the, the or the way the vortex re react to its environment the, this too this too yeah but uh also the 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 quantum and and the size of the vortex uh because mm -hmm. our scientists are able to to measure a diameter for instance for uh, a proton or for a whole um, atom and and so on eh? they, they, they they are able to to measure a diameter um, and um <laughs> For me, the diameter of these particles is not uh, the. Uh, this is nothing uh, solid. This is only the the diameter of the vortex, uh, because uh, and and the central part of the vortex, mm. uh, and and the, the the outer part is what scientists call Coulomb barrier, and what Mr. Keshe calls magnetosphere. Yeah? Mm. And the and the central part of the vortex, only the central part where all the uh, the spinning something we don't know what he, what is spinning here. Yeah? Uh, the intensity. Uh, uh, this spinning uh, thing is uh, uh, s s uh, such uh, intense um, spinning that it seems to be solid. Huh? Right. Like you, you, you are able to spin uh, the um, um, the wheel of a, of a bicycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know you have the the, the yeah. different. You can uh, um, put your hand through, but if you are spinning the bicycle wheel, uh, you cannot uh, uh, um, um, shoot an arrow yes. uh, through it. It's it's like a wall. Exactly. Huh? And this uh, must be uh, the same in the subatomic uh, level, and exactly. and I think that the the the, the substance um, is only one substance in the in the in the whole universe. We don't yeah. know how to call it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and Absolutely. this substance is spinning. This substance makes vortices, and there are. Small ones, we call them photons. There are a little bit larger ones, we call them electrons. There are much larger ones, we call them protons, and so on. Yes. Uh, uh, and all in all, uh, they, they, they consist of the same, and therefore they are able to interact, and they are able to, to go one through the other, because the... the exactly. The spinning pathways have a distance, and another particle which has uh, closer spinning pathways is able to go through. 
and exactly. the, the 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 picture that we have uh, a, a spherical vortex which is the proton and spherical vortex is all around uh, is mm. is wrong. Mr. Keshe uh, explains it this way too, but my personal opinion is this is wrong. All the the vortices intersect one another and mm. th it is not like uh, uh, the earth is uh, going around the sun uh, in the subatomic realm they are uh, um, intersecting uh, and going quite through the the middle of the of the other vortex exactly and, the, and, and the, this is the reason because uh, in in quantum physics they uh, they are not able to determine uh, a special place where they should search for the electron at a special point of time uh, hmm. they only uh, can make assumptions uh, exactly that's how you can uh, include in all this conversation all the pl plants planes of consciousness hold the various uh, level of uh, uh, dimensions because um, and also uh, to, uh, to go back to the, tr the pyramid and the water I have this uh, suspicion inside of me that why do we always find water under the pyramid isn't it that um, the pyramid it has an interaction with the the earth and create this water uh the 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 it kind of draw all the reasons from the earth and from the the, the uh, above and create the water and yeah. that's how the water is created yeah yeah this this is uh, exactly what uh Charles Berger in his books wrote oh yeah. really yeah yeah uh, he, he uh, in his words, uh, but uh, the sense was there are fields coming from the earth and fields coming from the sun. And uh, if the condition is the right, and there has to be a temperature about uh, uh, plus four degrees uh, Celsius, uh, mm. this is the ideal condition where uh, water. Uh, um, is created by these two fields from the sun and from the earth mm. and uh, he says uh, there has to be absence of light no light it has to be dark only okay. if it is dark cold only four degrees yes. and um, uh, without light cold and uh, a metal has to be in nearby metal iron or copper or another metal yeah. if there is all these three conditions within the earth within the mountain within the stones mm. of our of the crust of the earth mm. then in between the stone uh, water is coming into existence uh, water is not going from deep uh, uh, um, down in the in the mountain uh, up to the top it is created in 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 a near distance uh, beyond the surface yes and therefore the the, the spring comes out it has not yes. to go 2000 meters uh, through the stone it is created within the stone without light four degrees centigrade and some kind of metal has to be in in the area of the stone yeah mm, and where these three conditions come together there uh, water is created this is what what uh, he wrote uh, several times in his uh, uh, books uh, in in his scriptures which which are brought together from his son or his uh, uh, one of his uh, uh, friends to and, and they put it into a book. Yeah, he he never wrote a book himself. I I, I think or, or only a small one, but this is a, a philosophical book. But all his scriptures uh, um, about water 
um, they were collected from his uh, son and grandson and, and put in a, in a book. Um, Very good. I've just read it three months ago or so, and therefore I have it in mind. <laughs> yes. Funny. And it's uh, uh, when, when uh, Schauberger, uh, when, because I, I tried to tell this to the Cash Foundation people, they, they didn't have any reaction on it at all. Uh, when when I, I actually indirectly criticized Dr. Uh, Kosova, you know, yeah. because I said she got it up right, upside down. She, she put the gravity uh, in the front of the serpent and the magnetic field um, uh, around the serpent. And it's, and I said, it's, it's great, but it's the other way around. You have to put the gravity field uh, on the body and the magnetic in the, in the head. And, and I did mention uh, uh, Schauberger because with the, uh, Schauberger, when he found out that there was a very practical reason why uh, the salmon and uh, uh, the uh, trit, trout, why they uh, stick on uh, where the resistance are, are, are most heavy in the water. Why do they go in that direction? It doesn't make any sense. And so I tried to tell the Keshe Foundation people that it is, the cur it is when the animal makes a curve, then the whole work is done. It's not, you see, it's, it's not like if, uh, because that's, that has to do with the jet principle as well. It, the jet works exactly the same thing. It's not that it's cutting the molecules. It's working with the molecules. And that's what the salmon does as well. Uh, as well. It's using, once it got its curve in the body, then the whole work is done. Because the usage of, um, uh, of the curve itself has the amount of energy uh, that's going to be unlimitless. It's the opposite of um, of uh, uh, cutting the air. It's going through. It's going. It's, it's like if it's annulating uh, back and forth. So you do whatever you want. And so Schauberger must have found out, in at least in the end of his days, that if you use that principle. And you take the principle out of the water and with the principle from the movement of the fish, you just have to put it into the inner core, outer core principle and you'll have the same. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's actually not levitation. It's not anti-gravity either. It's up to you, what, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can call it anti-gravity because that's going to be what it looks like. But in fact, if you compare the, the fish with the curve and you realize that the curve is the same thing from the, from the ground in the water, the temperature in the water and the fish, then you have an alkaline and the um, acidic basic in the, in the core outer core principle. So you, you, you got it, uh, you got the, the device only by putting the ground, the temperature, and the fish together. Because when it spins, that's going to represent the, the body of the serpent always in action, always in movement. So when it spins, that's what you have all the time. Instead of being the fish who needs to make a curve in order to speed forward same thing with the serpent that the serpent is actually using two fields there is no touch between the, the body and the ground that's number one and number two is that when once it got once it creates its curve it's dancing through the air that is in between the oxygen and the uh, energy coming from the ground so you have no uh, no resistance at all. You know? So you, you you see this quite quite clearly. If you compare the different serpents, some of them are just like a flesh 
with the speed that you won't believe is possible from the creature. And you would think of it, you know, you would end up nowhere with the Darwinian principle because then you need to, you need to calculate every move from the body. And that's not going to happen. It's going to be like a, a very slow uh, speed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tobjorn, I thank you very much for your time. I have, to, I have to close the session now. I have to go to bed. <laughs> I have much uh, to yes. do uh, tomorrow. And then I have to I, leave. I thought that we were going to speak for five minutes. Uh, <laughs> you must understand, Ingrid, that I, 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 me and Monique loves to speak with you. Oh, you have to it's, keep mind forever. You're welcome. It's very nice. But... Uh, the, the honor I can give uh, back to you, uh, I love uh, it to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel very well today. So you, this oh. inspiration make me forget about it. Oh, okay. Uh, do you oh, have uh, nice. a, a, a cough? Hmm? Say hello to your husband. Okay. And... Uh, I, I wish you uh, all all the best. <laughs> uh, I wish you all the best too. Bye. From my heart. <laughs> From the d deepest spot of my heart. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Right. Till the next time. Yes. yes. Oh, uh, uh, Ingrid? Yeah? Uh, if ever you have something uh, on your brain or your heart, you, you just contact us. Okay, it's very nice. I will do it, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.